This episode of Internet Superstar is brought to you by GoDaddy.com, Netflix, and the satellite T2400CS. They stripped him of everything except his desire. His mission to become an Internet Superstar. Sadly, he's doing it with absolutely no resources. Nice dress, buddy. It's a dream coat, Gator. Whatever, man. Let's just do this show. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Thanks so much for coming out. Hello and welcome to Internet Superstar, the show that is still trying to figure out why it was invited to give the closing keynote at Ad Tech. I'm... Internet's Martin Sargent. Yes, sir. And I'm joined as always, joined as always by my good friend the Gator. How you doing, Gator? Yeah. I'm great, buddy. I'm great, man. This is this is wild. It's a lot it different is. from doing the show in your mom's shed. Isn't this you, something? Was... First of all, you don't have to worry about getting bit by deer ticks. That's yeah. kind of nice. I don't got to mow your mom's grass when we're done with the show. Look at this room that they put us in. I mean, Miley Cyrus couldn't fill this room. Everyone be able to find a seat out there? You guys all right? Unbelievable. I, last time I was in front of this many people, I was stripping at NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were coming up as a boy gator in the swamps of Florida, you know, hunting muskrat and all that, did you ever Nutrient. imagine for a second that you would be given the closing keynote at Ad Tech San Francisco 2008? No, I did. I'd, I'd tell you the truth, I still don't know what keynote means, but uh, it's, it's, I'm trying to figure it's, that out. It, it's kind of like the linchpin. Of the, the whole convention would fall apart if it uh, wasn't for us up here. Right, so so you don't want me to make an ass of myself. That's exactly what I'm saying, because you can't make an ass of yourself, because what we have assembled here before us are some very, very important people, Gator. Right. These people are some of the key decision makers who decide where to sync that online advertising okay. in the internet entertainment landscape. That's what we're a part of. And as you know, we sorely need some ad dollars. Yeah, I need some ad dollars. Like, let me get that up. Hernia operation reverts I got last year in Mexico. No, no, you see, you, you, that's shed talk, man. We don't want to be talking about that kind of thing. I here, walked right? hunched over for a year now, man. Yeah, you know, the next thing you know, you're going to be showing people your incision and everything. You're going to, you're going to turn people <laughs> no, off, I won't, all right? I won't do that. So a little bit of background for all you guys, uh, what Internet Superstar is and who we are. I imagine that most of you have no <laughs> idea who the hell we are, actually. So a little bit of background. For those of you who aren't familiar, uh, Internet Superstar was born when that guy who introduced us, that hotshot Revision 3 CEO there, Jim Louderback. Real hotshot. The hot show shot. was born when he canceled my previous show, Infected by Martin Sargent. Boo! <laughs> hey, what are you doing, Adelson? <laughs> Shut the hell up, man. Yeah, he canceled it, all right. And uh, when that happened, you know, I think people around the office, especially the HR guys, they started to get a little concerned because I was getting all depressed, I was acting all despondent. I think that the HR guys thought that I might hurt myself. You gained about nobody, 80 pounds. I did, I ballooned up a little bit. Nobody thought that would be a big loss, but then they thought that I might hurt other people in the office, which could be a huge loss. So, louder back there, he decided he was gonna give us one more chance to do another show. But he said there was a few conditions to do that show. First of all, he says, you're not allowed to do it on Revision 3 property, all right? Mm. Second of all, we're not going to sink any company resources whatsoever into your show except for the bandwidth to do it. And that's the reason that we have to shoot the damn show in my mom's shed. Actually, I think that we might have a little video clip about how that old cancellation said, and rebirth of our careers happened. Can we roll that? Please? He also said you couldn't get no more liniment rubs from the interns. That's dude, shed so. talk. Shut up. Let's uh, roll that clip. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim Lauterbach, CEO of Revision 3. And I'm here to announce some big changes in our programming. I've decided that our programming needs to appeal more to our corporate sponsors, and in order to make it that way, I've decided to make it more palatable to families, kids, the elderly, even my mother. Now, the first thing that had to go, as we all know, was infected. I mean, that show was tasteless, it was boring, it was not funny, and that Martin, that, 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 that what is that noise? What's going on? <laughs> Goddamn morons. So, uh, 
um, maybe that, thank you. I guess that gives you guys a little inkling why it is that we're forced to shoot our show in my mom's backyard shed. But that's okay, mm -hmm. because most internet superstars have come from very meager means, all right? We're right on track then. There we are, we are right on track there. But there's people who have become internet superstars before us. We're, we're, on, we're on track, but there's people who have gotten there before us, and those are the people who are guests on our show this very day. In just a minute, we're going to be talking internet superstars Kevin Rose from Dig Nation. Yeah. yeah. Woo. We're going to be talking to Kent Nichols from Ask a Ninja. We're going to be talking to Jeff McPherson, Dr. Tiki himself from Tiki Bar TV. Yeah. And from the Thunder Show, the wild man, Gary Vaynerchuk from Wine Woo! Library TV is going to be here. I can't wait to meet him, man. He He's is a, a wild, wild man. man. He is. But of course, now this all begs the question, well, what the hell are we doing here? I mean, we really honestly had no idea what ad tech was even about when they invited us to do this right. thing. So luckily, we had the opportunity on Tuesday to go walk around the show floor and get all those pressing uh, questions answered. We brought a camera around, and here's what we found out. We had a real neat time. Y'all check we? this That was a lot of fun. That was fun. Yeah. We Two, three, four. Well, here we are at AdTech San Francisco 2008. And even though I've been invited to give the closing keynote presentation, I honestly have no idea what AdTech is all about. So what do you say we go troll the convention floor and get some answers, as well as hopefully some free stuff, and also party invites. Come on, let's go. Hi, one of you guys want to talk to us briefly? I know. On camera? You can't? You know, uh, those Google people are kind of stuck up. They wouldn't talk to us on camera. Why not? I don't know. They got... They're probably fine. Fellas, what do you need to know? Well, basically, uh, what we wanted to know was uh, like the viability of a, a business model. You know, like mainly digital marketing technologies. Like hyper video, right? The producer, or like the producer. You know what, kid? I have no idea what you're talking about. I shoot a show out of my mom's shed, okay? Oh. So, Kawabunga. What are you guys all about? So we could make your video more compelling to your end users. Oh, dude, that's going to be a lot of work. I don't know if you've ever seen this show. <laughs> I got a van full of rhino horn out back. Can you help me move it, like, in a hurry? No. Yeah, you look a little like Don Henley. Is that right? <laughs> so Smiley Media, huh? Yep. What the hell are you guys so happy about? Such a lovely place. Such a lovely place. Da, 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 da. Oh my God! It's Matthew Lesko! <laughs> I knew that! Give me a pick. Give me, tell, tell me it's how to free. have it. Ah. Here he is, Pleo. He responds to touch and love and tickling and eating. Oh my God, I have to get one of those because I have nothing in my life that responds to love or touch right now. You know, I didn't have the heart to tell her, but I used to have a baby Pleo, but I had to have her put down. Used to drop batteries everywhere. Fresh ones. I Google myself like 17 times a day. Okay, I'm sorry, this lady's trying to get a baby root. Oh. Yo, you can have that. I have one. You may have two. Have Would you like a Butterfinger as well? Yeah. Go I for like it. I like a father. Yeah? Okay, thank you very okay. much. So how's your ad tech so far? <laughs> I like that in there. Okay. Hey, can I ask you a question? So these ad tech people, they get kind of rowdy, huh? Yes, they do. Yeah? Have you, had, have you had to break out the handcuffs or the taser or anything like that yet? Not yet. <laughs> so I'm actually acting in it. I'm look, look. Look. Like, what does ad tech mean to you? Advertising and tech. I don't know. Honestly, do you really want to be here? Yes. So are you guys, uh, because you work for a big company, are you being invited to all the big parties this week? I think everyone's invited to all the big parties. I haven't been invited to any of the parties. Do you guys got any extra invites? Dude, who are you most excited about rubbing shoulders with at the parties? Well, let's see. Any one of the uh, any one of the booth girls will always be good. We're having we're having a little reception. Where at? Ourselves. Uh, I haven't been invited yet. I don't know. You might not be invited. <laughs> now, is this for external use only? Yes, just for the hands, of course. All right. Can I take some? Yes, you may. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I got a bone to pick with you guys at Nielsen. My ratings are terrible. Can't you guys like cook the books or something? You guys drinking already? <coughs> uh, yes. 
finally somebody in here is selling something that doesn't need any advertising. There we go. Like, I think you guys have figured out the key to advertising, getting uh -huh. everyone loaded. Absolutely. Yeah, how's Good it working strategy. out for you so far? Uh, you're still sober though, you need to have a Yeah, let's though. drink, huh? I'm done. Ready? Ah. And away we go. And then, great grandfather Sergeant, he came back from the war. Dude, you gotta, you gotta take a hike. What? Got too many. Okay, are you going to the big keynote presentation, the closing keynote? You know, we're not. Why not? Aren't you excited about who's speaking? No, too many parties going on, there's no way. Martin Sargent's gonna be giving a talk. Great. We're not going. Yeah. Martin Sargent? Yeah. You going to the big ad tech uh, closing keynote? Yeah, whatever, buddy. So are you excited about the closing keynote? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not actually, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it, but uh, it sounds do, like... Do you know who's uh, uh, the is speaker? Is it Kevin Rose this year? Martin Sargent. Martin Sargent. Do not support AdBright. Thanks a lot. I'm Martin Sargent. Oh boy, okay, well, nice <laughs> to meet you, Martin. Thanks for coming by. Thank you very much. AdBright, we love AdBright. Bye-bye. San Francisco 2008 and we will be right back with Dig Nation co-host Kevin Rose after this word from our sponsor. That's a good looking bunch out there. Do you want to be an internet superstar? Well now you can get started on the cheap. Just enter the promo code STAR1 when registering your domain name at GoDaddy.com and receive 10% off your order. Come on, if a guy who's all geared up to save the universe can do it, can't you? Become an internet superstar with GoDaddy.com. Promo code STAR1. And welcome back to my show. Well, you may have yeah. heard about our first friend tonight, most likely from reading about his sexual exploits on Valley Wag. <laughs> but he's also the founder and chief architect of DIG, as well as the co-host of the phenomenally successful online television show, DIG Nation. Please give it up for Kevin Rose. Come on up here, yeah. Kevin. Yeah. While he's coming up here, why don't we take a look at a clip from DIG Nation. He's just a boy. <laughs> yes! Whoa! Whoa! I'm Alex Albrecht. And I'm Kevin Rose. Dig Nation! Welcome to Dig Nation. Dignation.com. Dig Nation covers some of the hottest user submitted stories on the social news website, dig.com. That's D I G G. Dot com. 3,500 people dug the story submitted <laughs> by Liquid Sword. You pop off the top. But the USB stick is his penis. Thank you, Kevin. And he sits with his hands on the laptop, and the power happens, and he starts humping the laptop. Eh, the dogs so, do that. Dude. <clears throat> That's why robots will never overtake humans. Well, we say now. Because you can kick them and down flash and to they 20 years over. later, robots laughing at us watching this episode. Yeah, but you can always, <laughs> you can always do that. We take over. Because, <laughs> come on, seriously, robots are going to have a Japanese accent. Let's be honest. <laughs> the holidays are upon us, and Kevin and I have decided to take a little bit of time off. Kevin here likes to prune hedges. Isn't that right, Kevin? That's right, Alex. I'm actually just pruning my rose bushes now. They look gorgeous. I enjoy myself a little whittling. I've uh, actually whittled this duck head letter opener for Kevin. Here you are, Kevin. Oh, thank you. Yeah, happy holidays. Yeah, All of a sudden, it became like a. Oh Hi. shit, my wallet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Web 2.0 Godchild, Kevin Rose. How you doing, Thanks Kevin? Thanks so much for up, being Kevin? on our show. Gator, I love you. I love you too, buddy. <laughs> right. So, Kevin, you remember when you used to work for me? That's true. <laughs> it's true. We worked on the same show at Tech TV. Yeah, and you worked under me on that same show at Tech TV, if I remember nice. right. Might have happened. <laughs> Might have happened. So, oh, uh, Kevin, what, to what do you owe the phenomenal success of Dig Nation? I mean, you're, you're a freaking rock star, man. I don't know about that, but... Yeah, you are. Come on. Well, I mean, Dig Nation's been... Um, 
the concept was awesome because we decided to just sit on the couch, have a couple of beers, and talk about our favorite dig stories. So it really wasn't about um, making an, an over elaborate show or, or doing anything crazy. Uh, uh, it was just a you know a camera and a light package, and that was pretty much about it. So you're saying it's kind of wrong headed to act like you're doing a show out of your mom's backyard shed? <laughs> I thought you were doing it. <laughs> yeah, we are. So if, if you were not the man behind dig.com and you and Alex were still doing a show about the top news stories for maybe some other news aggregation site, do you think that it would have enjoyed the same success? Probably not, just because the, the people that were watching this show initially were the people that were submitting the stories. So it was kind of this thing where uh, they wanted to be mentioned on Dignation or mm -hmm. and they wanted to have, um, you know, we used to highlight the users every time we read a story. We're like, okay, this is a user. Uh, is the one that submitted it. So uh, we connected with the community in that way. And then we do live shows and events. We'd go out and, and, uh, and, and travel across the United States and over to London and Amsterdam and anywhere we could to bring people out, get them all drinking, and just have a good time. And you have huge audience. Like when you guys went to London, was it like 2,000 people in the audience? Something it was like, like 13, 1,400, something like that. Unbelievable. Yeah, nice. as, as the success of Dig and Dig Nation, have they like sort of mirrored each other on the upswing? Uh, Dig, Dig started taking off, and then it, that was about six months in, and then we decided to launch uh, Dig Nation. I called Alex up uh, because, you know, we do the TV stuff yeah, together. Yeah, absolutely, for Tech TV yeah, and we were, G4. We, yeah, we were hosting a show together, and then uh, we said, what would happen if, you know, we just get together and drink beers and, and talk about stories? Stuff so, that you're doing anyway. Exactly. I mean, it, we were doing the exact same thing, but we just didn't have a camera sitting there. Right, I got a question. Yeah. You want to start a website with me? What's, uh, what's the idea? I don't know. I know a lot about, like, waitresses at Shoney's and stuff like that. <laughs> Something like Gator, that. I will do anything with you. All right. We need to start a Gator show. <laughs> I like that. So how, how big? <laughs> I'll tell you what. How big is your audience right now? How many people watch Dig Nation? There's about um, we get about 250 thousand downloads a oh week. Oh my God, that's unbelievable. 250 thousand. You do pretty well yourself, you know, my friend. Not that well, man. Not that well. You know that very well. You're on the border of Vision Three. Come on. You take away three zeros. And... But when you guys do these, like, <laughs> when you guys. When you guys do these live shows, are you still shocked by the rock star treatment you get when you get 1,500 people out there? Are you a little scared by it all? Uh, it can be a little creepy at times. A little bit. No, it's, it's, it's cool. Um, What's the creepiest thing that's ever happened? Come on. When oh, you're done on some show. guy tried to jump on my back and wanted to piggyback ride, and he was all sweaty and shit. That's, that's my bad, dude. I, I got a little overexcited. <laughs> and, <laughs> and stay back, Gator. Hey, he's a hell of a uh, dodgeball player, too. We, we did play dodgeball the other night. Yeah. So, so do you and Alex have, like, uh, bodyguards when you go to these things? Uh, Prager just started, in, like, getting <laughs> well, some... Prager's your bodyguard, that little guy? <laughs> Prager's pretty much... What the hell is he going to do? Yeah, he's quick as a squirrel, he's, but he's, he's not going to protect somewhere. you. <laughs> What's it like hanging out with that little guy all the time on Prager? He's cool. He's, he's small but strong. I woke, I woke up one night, and he was standing over my bed. It was weird, <laughs> weird enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a little off subject. A little overshare for the conference, for the ad tech. Okay. So, you know, we might end up being Kevin Rose's bodyguards <laughs> the way this is going. Yeah, if we're not. <laughs> doing his dry cleaning or something like that, man. So I know that we work for the same network and everything, Revision 3, but can you explain yeah. to everyone else out there how the Dig Nation ad model works? It's pretty successful. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit different than, than your traditional ad model. Like, we don't... Um, well, kind of like what you saw what you did here with GoDaddy, except not so hardcore and with men and small things. We, we tend to, like... We, we talk about our sponsors, we hand pick our sponsors, meaning that someone from ad sales will come in and say like, okay, here's a really cool sponsor, we think you guys would like the product, and oftentimes we've heard of the product, we've used it. Uh, we had Jawbone sponsor a couple weeks back, and we both, Alex and I both used Jawbone headsets in the past. And so the cool thing is that we can sit down with our audience and say like, this is a product that we believe in, this is a service that we believe in, and, and we have a good connection with the audience, and I think that, um, you know, if we were just like, talking about a sponsor and didn't really weren't into the product, it wouldn't be the same. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a throwback to the old advertising model of like old AM radio. Yeah, like the Paul Harvey kind of thing. Just for the record, we'll take any advertisers on Internet Superstar. <laughs> yeah, Nambla cool. wants to take out an ad you got. As long as you got the money, it's fine, man. We need the ad revenue, seriously. Go, GoDaddy's not really one of our sponsors. Just <laughs> you just rolled them either. in. So Kevin, you've already been are, on, actually, you've yeah. already been on traditional television. What we were talking about before, you're pretty successful at it. Do you ever want to go back onto the television? Absolutely you, not. You don't want to. You're happy no, with I, this. I mean, I've, we've talked about this offline before, but I, when we were in traditional television, we were doing this the show. Um, you know, especially when you're doing live TV, you have these different blocks and these dif different segments that you're doing, and, and they're limited to a certain amount of time. Yeah. And so when you're on there, you have like five or six minutes to talk about a given topic, and then you have to move on. 
you keep getting like you have an earpiece in and they're like move on next topic next topic so um not only that but we were on like third tier digital cable platinum yeah, triple Comcast, platinum way plus. out there and no one could find you and you were in all these households and but we no one could ever find us and the, as opposed to there being like eight billion websites people could find you that well way. no no but the thing that's different is that you know we we have the podcast set up and we we take the content and we recompress it and we allow people to, to to view it when and where they want to so if they want to see it you know, on, on their podcast while they're flying from SFO to LAX, they can do that uh, on their iPhone. If they want to view it on their TiVo, they can do that too. I mean, we have ways to move the data around. Right. And, and for us, it's really about getting to as many devices as possible and then allowing the people to decide when and where they want to watch it. So do you think that this model is ever going to overtake the audience share of traditional TV? Well, we had, when we were Tech TV, we had a Nielsen rating of 0.15, so 150,000 people watching So you're time. getting bigger We've got bigger numbers now, now a revision yeah. 3 so. than what we got at Tech TV or G4. And it's you don't awesome. have to dance with the man anymore. Either. That's you're true. Just free to do your own thing. Do whatever we want. Yeah. That's you can put cool. men up in little uh, G-strings if you want to. <laughs> you you got to do what Prager tells you to, though, right? That's true. Prager's my boss. <laughs> well, Kevin Rose, it has been such a pleasure having you. Let me tell you one more thing. You, my friend, are an internet superstar. Thank you, Marty. Yes, sir. Kevin Rose, Thanks, Gator. you can catch Dig Nation every Friday at 6 p.m. Kevin, we want you to stay up here, would you? Okay. Would so, you stay up here? Because sure, we're going to sure, bring sure. up a couple of my other internet superstar yeah. BFFs, and we'd like you to partake in the conversation. You yeah, mind you doing that? over there. All right, so let's bring out the next one. Our next friend tonight is the co-creator, along with Douglas Serene, of the phenomenally successful, award-winning online television show, Ask a Ninja. Let's take a look at a clip. Nice. What well, I am Ninja, he is Ninja, she is Ninja. Ignorance-colored glasses, bro. Ninjas are living in the same world you are. We're just better at it, living that is. When it comes to dying, you non-ninjas are aces. I mean, you guys are really, really good. I mean, the ways that you've come up with just for the... <laughs> Which brings me to my tirade. Although we live in the same world, let's be honest, danger and fatalness, they're pretty subjective terms. I mean, what might be dangerous or fatal to you might just be like a good first date idea for us. Only real Ask a Ninja fans are still watching the episode right now. So really, shh, just you, go to fans.askaninja.com. Let's really try and keep this just for ninjas and cool people. Here he is, everybody, the co-creator of Ask a Ninja, Ken right. Nichols. How you doing, Ken? Hey. Thanks so much for being here on our show. No problem, no problem. Anywhere Kevin Rose goes, I will I know, I will you just got to follow this guy wherever. You're going to find yourself in a good place Seriously. when you do that, when you agree. So, Ken, um, before you guys uh, decided on the concept of Ask a Ninja, did you try out some other models, you know, Ask a Cosmonaut? Or no, no, no. Like, uh, you know, I, I, like I, I think I've got to say that I've got to take complete and utter credit for this. Like, the, uh, <laughs> Ask a Ninja would be completely nothing without me, you know. Fact, you invented ninjas. I, I invented ninjas. Uh, you know, like, that, that ninja, the, the ninja is basically just a puppet of, you know, of my creation. And... You know, I'm the puppet master. Yeah, and uh, you guys have ninjas trademark now. I mean. Oh yeah, we've we've trademarked that deep. You know, we'll sue anyone um, <laughs> anywhere that uses the term ninja or just even ni. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's all us. You know, That's absolutely. A, you sue people like kids dressing up on Halloween. It's oh, like, oh, oh we off. we we have we have sued the pa literally sued the pants <laughs> off of small children. You sue, you sue those little split toe boots right little off. Kids of, with like shurikens. Absolutely, and, like, absolutely, and everything. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's just uh, it's just something that we do. You know, I, I think being being very um, closed modeled and legally aggressive, I think that's the that's the future <laughs> of internet content. It's a beautiful so, future. So take us back and let, let us know how and when Ask a Ninja started. Well, it all started when you know uh, a, a ninja just kind of showed up in my uh, really? uh, in my bedroom, which is kind of kind of creepy because uh, I wasn't expecting just it. Just another you know? Wednesday night at Kent. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, usually there's a Craigslist ad going uh, <laughs> yeah. for other things. I got but... four of them buried in my backyard. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> they weren't real ninja. They were the people that needed to be sued. <laughs> and, well, you know, and and so like the the ninja came to us, and uh, the you know so and you know we became the the, the first official um, the the voice, if you will, of the international order of ninjas, Ion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, so this is the first time a real ninja has actually 
uh, you know, decided to speak to the world. And, uh, you know, I'm, we're, we're grateful for that. Yeah, when you guys were, were starting this out, were you trying to get into other showbiz avenues that were before you decided yeah, on the Yeah, you know, like, thing? yeah, um, like I'd been working in, um, uh, writer's offices, um, in, on bad, television network shows. I used to work for G4? Uh, well, no, 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 no. USA, USA Cable. Like, uh, literally, literally, I worked on a show that was described as CSI Old West. <laughs> Dude, that's uh, awesome. Why called, did I come up with that? It's called Peacemaker. I think it's still on TV. We got a green light there for a minute. <laughs> but, but literally, they, they would have like like the the, cent, the blood centrifuges like on an old wagon wheel. Like right. like that was that was in the pilot episode. It was like Wait, all who right. Was, who was in there? Was it? That wasn't Chuck Norris. Was it? No, that, that was Tom Berenger. Tom, oh, okay. That I didn't go like anywhere. It. I know. Shocking. <laughs> Shocking it didn't get picked up after the yeah. nine episode. So my understanding is that you're really the only guy that can get in contact with the ninja. Yeah, himself, you know, uh, I, I mean, I, I can sum, I can try to summon him. I, I don't know if, uh, if he'll appear or not. Um, you know, a smoke bomb or something. Well, I don't know, ninja. Are you out there? What are you talking about? I've been hanging here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, there you are. Oh, it's the ninja, everybody. Right. Yeah. When I'm sneaking up behind me. <laughs> but I heard you talking, Nichols. You're in trouble. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? I, like, it, it's all, it's all me, man. Like, you're, 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 you're just kind of the, I don't know, the, the like the paper cutout, the, the dance in front of the paper. Really? We'll see, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut some actual things out of you. <laughs> we'll see. Now, Gator, you said that you had a couple questions that you want to ask the ninja, right? I want to know where I can get me a pair of those, uh, more a pair of those split toe boots. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm hanging here in uh, Kevin Rose's basement right now. <laughs> also, I want to get some throwing stars. Yeah, because I got some pesky squirrels around my house. I'd like to try to get rid of them. Don't go up against the nasty squirrel. All right, that's a, that's the enough of talking about Prager. Well <laughs> so, so how many, how many, how many people do you guys have in the Ask a Ninja audience nowadays? It's huge, right? Yeah, yeah. It's you know, we, smaller because I'm because I'm killing them off on a regular basis. Anybody? <laughs> it's true. So we we have to kind of like we had, we, had, we were getting like like billions and billions of people, but now we we we've, we've kind of honed it down to you know just a couple million a month. Now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, we, we get we get between about hey 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 hey. That's trying, enough, Ninja. I'm trying to give the advertisers some real information so 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 we can move out of our crappy apartment. <laughs> Jesus. We get between five and six hundred thousand. No, downloads you do not. And streams per week. Wow. Five and six hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. I, I misspoke on Dignation. We get about <laughs> yeah. eight. No, dude. We're about, we're about eight dude. to nine hundred thousand. No, actually. dude. You're such a douche. I'm, my fault. You're such a douche. You're, you're trying to big league? You're, you're trying to big league from the orange me. couch? You're trying to one on you're, you're trying to... You're trying What's wrong with the orange couch? You're going to be sitting here in a minute. <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, I'm... <laughs> I will sit there now. I don't. I don't need. I don't. Need, I don't oh, need the blue oh, chair. Oh, ah, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Uh, whatever, whatever, Rose. All right. Hey, hi. My name's no. Alex Albrecht. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. So here's the deal. So here's the deal. Don't even try it. <laughs> what, what, what do you call that martial arts move when you sit your ass down and something like that? <laughs> hey, dude. I know my ass food. Is right? what I know ass food. Wait. Okay, I'll go back to the guest chair. So in the, this show, five to six hundred thousand people. That, yeah, that's yeah, phenomenal. That's and it seems to be distributed everywhere. It's like you could pick up Ask a Ninja, on an unbelievable number of platforms. Right? Uh, no, actually, uh, like uh, you know, we 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 try to keep AskAninja.com like the the central repository and our iTunes feed and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, j just because that's where we see the value and like we, where. Like we're, we're we're very open and embracing of uh, you know Creative Commons and having the fans share it in whatever means yeah, and yeah. remixing and all that sort of stuff. But uh, as long as they're not making any money off of it, if they start making money, fist fly. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So it's like non-commercial, uh, you know. And so so you know. Wait, we, wait. You say it's non-commercial, but I read in TV Week, I believe it was in December, that you guys are bringing in something like $100,000 a month in ad revenue and sponsorship Absolutely. deals? Absolutely. Like, yeah, like, no, no, like you can share it non-commercially. We are a commercial venture, and we've got yeah. scary lawyers if, if someone else is trying to exploit it commercially. Mm -hmm. so, so we are a commercial venture. We're a company. 
Uh, You're getting rich off this ninja nonsense. Well, no, like literally we are still living in our crappy apartments, <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, so we're, the, the whole enterprise is grossing, you know, that, but, you know, am I seeing that? No, I am not. <laughs> you know, I, am, like, I have seen it. I have a huge palatial cave. I, I own a mountain in India. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborately decorated. I've, I've made millions off the past I just haven't given any to Ken Doug yet. <laughs> I can't even hear him. I can't understand what the damn ninja is saying. Is anyone else getting anything out of this? We can't understand him up here. <laughs> so you're just going to point a sword Whoa. now? <laughs> <laughs> that sword looks awesome on an eyesight. Let me just say that. Yeah. Like some hedge trimmers or something you got going on there, buddy? You don't need any subtitles for that. <laughs> pretty clear. Did you all... I'll do all my talking with this. <laughs> yeah, on that plane. So I understand asking Ninja and the success that you're having with it has opened up a lot of a lot more doors in yeah, the showbiz world. I mean, I understand that you're you're writing a movie script right now. Yeah, yeah. Like we like so we're really excited. We uh, we got hired to do Douglas and I uh, got hired to write the the relaunch, and I'm directing um, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and so. So we're re relaunching the whole uh, series. That's fantastic. Now, was this? Did, did you guys deliver this project? Was this your idea, or did some studio come to you and say we want to do a like a the, produ the, the production company that has the rights uh, to the to, to the whole Tomatoes franchise? They <laughs> the whole Tomatoes. No, I know. Like it's crazy. Like, let's get like, those they, ninja they, guys. They, uh, they emailed uh, our our business account like just blindly, and they're like, we would like some help making viral videos to yeah. promote the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes brand. We and, get a lot of emails like that. Too. And uh, yeah. and so like it was like. And at that point, usually the movie is made and everything's done. And uh, I got got that email, and I, I immediately sent to our Hollywood people. I was like, yeah, "Make Hollywood. us make us writer director on this." Yeah, yeah. And, and then and like they said, "Oh, they are sending over all of the movies and like watch them, and then you'll have a lunch." And like I was like, "All right." Did you guys then, go to the Ivy or something like no, that? No, no, we. Yeah, we yeah, how do you we, get Hollywood people? I don't, like get, I don't know. You get know get no, no, we went to a place called Eat. Eat. That's all. It's called Eat. With a period. Was that like that buffet place? No, no, no. They they serve like they serve literally fancy uh, TV dinners. <laughs> like that's literally on the menu. Uh, and so we went to eat like Swanson or Hungry yeah, Man. Exactly. Or eat. I got those in my truck right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then we just like hit it off with the guy, and and uh, and then so we came up with a concept for the movie, and uh, and then they're like. Well, we've got the. Can you tell us what the concept for the movie? It's is? It's basically just taking the original and like and turning up the volume and uh, li literally uh, we kill everyone in in a small town like within 15 minutes. This with, was your with pitch. Tomatoes. This yeah, is your pitch that eat. All right, we're just gonna take the original concept. We're gonna turn up the volume. <laughs> we're gonna turn it up. We're that's how you have to talk in Hollywood. Yeah, that's how you have to talk in Hollywood. You go, we're, gonna, we're gonna make it go to eleven, and uh, you know you have to just use old hackney phrases, and uh, you know, but 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 seem like you're a hipster. And uh, you guys also have a book coming out, right? We do. It's called the Ninja Handbook, and it's a full parody of the Boy Scout Manual, and it's uh, it's coming out. <laughs> What's that, Ninja? I wrote it. You guys transcribed it. Right, right, right. Well, the ninja kind of like recited it to us, and then we just kind of uh, it, like it's painfully recited to, and then we transcribed it. Um, and so it's the, the official like how to become more ninja like, and like if you, if you so if you're not a ninja, you know, it guides you through merit badges and ranks and things like that. Gotcha, gotcha. That's fantastic. So it's like getting a few stripes on your white belt as you go up through. It's useful. <laughs> well, I don't know. You, you've got, well, you're not you've you've got got a, karate, you're the ninja guy. You've got stripes on your whites. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wear a jumpsuit. Yeah. I gotta get a get a copy of this book. It must be real clever. <laughs> <laughs> totally, it's all shit <laughs> jokes. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, I got a little message for you, Ninja, and you, Kent Nichols. You are both internet superstars, and we thank you so much yeah. for being here on the thank show you. at Ad Tech. Hey, to learn the wisdom of the ninja, what you want to do is go to askaninja.com. And the book is coming out, what, in September? September. All right, so look for that. I'm sure you can pre-order it already on Amazon. Kent Nichols from Ask a Ninja, everybody. All right. All right, we will be right back with Dr. Tiki himself, Jeff McPherson from Tiki Bar TV, right after this word from our sponsor. 
Last year, for her 54th birthday, I got my Aunt Clara a garden spade for her wild herb patch. But as soon as she got that spade, she just got this weird dreamy look in her eyes, and then she went out into the backyard and started digging, and digging, and digging. Within a week, she had cleared a 40-foot pit and had equipped it with a sump pump and buttressed the walls with a latticework of cedar trees she chopped down from her neighbor's yard. We had to have her shot with a tranquilizer dart and committed to an asylum where she spends her days chained to a bed ranting about something called the awakening. I should have gotten her Netflix instead. If I had, instead of being crazy now, she'd be home safe and sound, enjoying over 90,000 titles delivered free to her home with no late fees. Poor Aunt Clara. And poor me. I'm the one who has to fill in that pit. Don't make the same mistake. Get Netflix instead. For amazing savings, sign up at the secret site www.netflix.com slash superstar. Welcome back to our show. Our next friend tonight is the creator and the star of one of the most popular online television shows in the history of the medium. Here is Jeff McPherson from Tiki Bar TV. Let's take a look at a clip, anyway. Jeff. the day that I ordered some more uh, more cocktail ingredients and again today like so many times in the past I wake up with a headache and no memory of the evening where is all the liquor going that is the question doctor somewhere has a key to the tiki bar when I buy booze they sneak in at night bonk me on the head with a yes. pipe or flapjack or some sort of sapper takes the booze and then I wake up with no memory of the evening and no alcohol that's my friends is theft, and I will stand for it no more. I say we institute drink tickets. Cue the music. everyone, Dr. Tiki himself, Jeff yes. McPherson. Hey, Jeff, you. welcome to Thank our you. show. Man, so what was the original concept of Tiki Bar TV? And has the show evolved as yes. it's gotten more and more successful? I don't believe in evolution. I no. believe in creationism. <laughs> I'm, I'm a creator. So uh, I, I conceived it, and it, it all came to be in one brilliant flash. Now, we had a desire. There's humor in there. You have to dig around a bit. <laughs> Um, we had a desire to make a show. I'd seen Rocket Boom, I'd seen uh, video blogs, and that's about what was going on on the web at that yeah, point. Yeah. And so the desire to make the show superseded, you know, any ideas about it. And there was no audience at that point, so it didn't matter what we were, you know, what we were doing. I thought it'd be cool if we got 500 viewers. So my apartment was already decorated like a tiki bar. Get out of here! It was not. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. <laughs> so because this was the first time that I was. Living on my own. Now that's not to say that I was, you know, I moved out of my house, but, um, but the first time I had no roommates. And so finally I was allowed to decorate my place exactly the way I wanted. So I obviously turned to Tiki and, uh, had Clearly. a set decorator Clearly. come and turn the place into a Tiki bar. That's what I did with my truck too, but it got some unwanted attention for me. Uh, and what did you do with your truck? I decorated like a Tiki bar. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, there's some um, three-letter three DUI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get, yeah. Um, so um, I'm completely, completely lost. Well, oh yeah. So the idea. So how did this thing come about, right? So we've got video blogging. We've got uh, a, a costume. I had a, a doctor's outfit in my uh, closet left over from Halloween. Of course you did. Absolutely. <laughs> and I had seen that, you know, originally I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll stand behind the bar and make these drinks. And then I had my buddy, uh, Kevin Gamble, plays Johnny Johnny. I'm like, well, we got this Fez, so that'll be your thing. And what about this, this, this Lala? Was she and then in your closet? Lala, we're getting out? to Lala. We're getting, we're getting to Lala. She's been making some headlines lately. I don't know if you've been 
following. Oh, I've been the, following her the, career quite okay. closely. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Not as closely as Kevin Rose, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> I read Valley Wag. What can I say? Woman. Oh my God, uh, she she is delightfully talented. Absolutely. So. I quickly realized, well, you know, Johnny Johnny's going to have to have something to do, so he should go behind the bar. He'll be like the the uh, pharmacist. And so we're, uh, the show's about a doctor who prescribes cocktails to solve problems. And we needed... Well, based on my life, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> We needed a, um, some kind of an excuse. Uh, well, we needed a lady. So so we contacted Lala. We, we desperately need one of those. <laughs> yes, too, yeah. In our show and our lives. We have the ugliest show on, on the whole internet. <laughs> So you, yeah, you need you could use a Lala. Yeah, we could. She's she's going to be actually coming down to California for a visit. Um, yeah, I'll get I'll get your email. Do you have email? Um, I, I the public library. Yeah. I use it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, so the idea came about like we were like we didn't really know what we were going to do. We we're like we'll figure it out while we're rolling. So we just started rolling, and we wanted this to be instead of. You know, I always use the analogy, like, instead of going out bowling, not that any of us ever went out bowling, but, you know, uh, come on over Friday night, we'll shoot for an hour. And, uh, and we decided we were going to have a recipe in there, so there'd be some kind of, uh, some kind of a bookend, some kind of a thing to let you know, okay, this thing that's kind of meaningless and made up as we go along sure. is coming to an end. And as more and more people started watching it, well, first of all, some of my friends hated it. They thought it was stupid and we were, we were making fools out of ourselves. No. They missed the point, yeah. Um, you get actually drunk, right? You, you're yeah, actually guys are the drinking. Same thing. Yes. <laughs> so you, really you just can't tell when you're watching it. You guys seem to lose it. <laughs> <and crash. laughs> That's the different thing about this. Like we we figured, well, why is anybody going to come and watch something that at that point was you know 320 pixels by 240? It's this tiny postage stamp thing. So we can get far better on television. So we thought, well, let's just let's break the rules. We'll make it up as we go. If we screw up lines, you know, uh, what does it matter? But it doesn't and look like it looks like you guys have really planned this out. It looks fantastic. The sets are great. The costumes are great. It has sort yeah. of this filmic look to it. Did you guys have a background in filmmaking? Yeah, actually, you can see the progression from say episode yeah. one to now. Uh, we do have a background in filmmaking. And the reason that the show kind of looked rough around the edges to start with is that you know this was our this is going to be on the weekend. We didn't want to. Um, be working. They didn't want to bring out lights. Well, how long does it take to, to shoot a typical episode of Tiki Bar TV? Now it takes uh, eight hours. Wow. Sometimes wow. a little bit longer. So it has gotten quite a bit longer. So now we need to pace ourselves at the cocktail um, bar. <laughs> I know how to pace myself. <laughs> let's just say there's a lot of outtakes that could reveal who doesn't know how to pace uh, Let's name names. <laughs> him or her. Well, well, one thing that your show lacks... We've never puked on the show, by the way, but... One time, one time. <laughs> see, these, see, mine's live to tape, though. And, and that was How on uh, your co-host's couch, if I remember that. That's episode, right. right? That's he right. didn't like that, did no, he? Yeah, Come on, puke on this couch. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Come on. All right, all right. <laughs> actually, actually, I, I don't know if there, now's the right time, time for it, but, you know, we have yet to get uh, a, uh, we have a sponsor, Wizard Media, uh -huh. um, but we have yet to get a product placement sponsor. Um, we'd really like to um, do that throwback to the 50s where we blatantly start pitching the camera. Um, Enjoy this fine product. You know, that, <laughs> that kind of a thing. Like right. cigarettes and things? C cigarettes? No, sir. <laughs> Chesterfield. Right. But you guys might I not have product placement yet, but your show has been placed. But I'm announcing... You get the fast. Oh, are you going to make a big announcement, announcement here? Yeah, I have an announcement. Uh, the first product I placement... I hope there's alcohol in that bag. I, it's a product placement. I don't think that she's going to pay me, but Loretta, a nice well, lady, approached me at, at a tiki bar last night, a, a fan event, That's a nice bag. and gave me... Um, Sort of a milky uh, Sirenex Enterprises homemade spiced elixir. Well, let's pass that around, man. Wow. Dr. Tiki, right? Wait, wait, you have to take the first drink of this, no, no, no. of this toxic brew. That looks like something my mom used to make in a hollowed out stump in her backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Like, rub wait, that wait, on your chest when you're all Come on, Kevin, just have a, just have a smoke. Right, all right, right, back down. See, right, I'm like, the host. I'm sorry. I'm not scared. Let's kill Martin first. We're based in Vancouver. Oh, okay. So all three of you live there. Yeah, actually. Okay. Because I read, didn't somebody, one of the people on your show, like, save somebody from, that like, from a That is viscous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's like, you know, when you go to, like, Perkins or Denny's and they got that syrup I think tray. I think you just wrote the ad copy for that, for that product. Ooh, that is viscous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. 
Oh, but. if you're looking for viscous li- <laughs> liquor. We got viscous in spades. Wow. Do you know what the alcohol count in that is? Because I feel a little... Brent, come on up here and rub some of this in my chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys... I don't know... Yeah, You so, talk about product placement, but you your show has been placed. I mean, when Steve Jobs unveiled the iPod, there was Tiki Bar TV, right? Uh, yeah, you guys were in the Apple stores for six months. I mean, you go into a Target store, you would see Tiki Bar TV. How did you make all that happen? You know, it was pretty cool. I think we were just there early. Um, we some. were... Oh, can I wait till the end of this thing? We'll get, well, I'll get me on the couch. I'm really. Uh, we'll have Gary do a yeah, tasting we'll on that. I love me some biscuits. <laughs> Swish it but, around uh, in his mouth. I don't, I don't want this. <laughs> be, careful, be careful, you don't have any open flames around it. <laughs> I don't think like it's closed. Le- it's not legal to make a. You can probably liquor, roll that up and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Shed talk. You touched on something. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny, the bartender, actually did save a woman's life in New York. That's what I heard. Oh, I, yeah. he, he pulled somebody off a train track. He's a hero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a hero. What happened? What um, uh, well, man. it was Steve that Jobs. That wasn't just a, a ratings yeah. ploy? No, it wasn't. You know, I mean, it was his blog, and it hasn't been backed up by anybody. <laughs> but um, I think it was Jay Adelson, um, famous man. Yeah, there he uh, is. Yeah. CEO of Dig CEO of everything. Now. It's cool. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, What's the he, 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 he like, like posted a link to it on Dig and then became a top story on Dig. We've been doing pretty well on, on your site. Lala's made a number of top story things for some of her performances and whatnot. On my site? I don't have anything to do with Dig. Hey, it's not too <laughs> oh, bad sorry. if you cut it with I'm water. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're sorry. But, uh, no, you're right. So we, we, Steve Jobs um, um, did use the show when he was launching the iPod uh, with video. Listen to me, I'm, I'm like towing the company line. They always wanted to say iPod with video, not video sure. iPod. I'm sure. I'm still doing it. So uh, that went, you know, our, our, that just suddenly got us an incredible amount of attention. I think we were just, we were really fortunate in that there weren't that many shows out at all. You're this always, was what, 2005? Right? Yeah, so? it was pretty much, it was pretty much, guys, as far as I know, there was like, uh, like video I'm, blogs and then a handful, yeah. you know, three or four. I'm pretty sure Steve Jobs has no idea who the hell I am, actually, even though I've showed up on his property a few times. <laughs> uh, I'm going down, I actually, I'm going to the Apple campus tomorrow to cause trouble. I will enjoy that. I saw him at, uh, I, you know, I was with a minder, I guess, on Apple campus uh, at that one info. A minor? A, a minder. Ah. A minder. <laughs> no, we don't talk about a minor. No. Um... <laughs> I swear. So, so laws are different in Canada. <laughs> they're different. In, yeah, they are different in Canada. <laughs> Drinking age here is 21, right? It's tragic. I have no idea. Is it? In, yes, in, in, so. in, in province to province, it's different. But it's BC. It's 19, and then I think uh, in uh, Quebec, it's 16. I don't know <laughs> the French. Um, so I was. So I was. I was there, and I was being given the tour of which is nothing. They don't show you anything. You know, they show you a bunch of locked doors at Apple Campus, and then there's Steve Jobs. And I'm like, oh, there he is. You know, and I know that he's seen the show because I saw him watching it on the keynote speech. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, I'm thinking, what do I say? What do I say? And then... Did he ask you to sign his turtleneck or anything? <laughs> <laughs> he, he said did not. I'm right? thinking about the what color would you... You have to use one of those white marker things. So, he, no, my minder just immediately goes, um, uh, don't talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he actually said it. I think he goes... There's Steve Jobs. Don't talk to him. And like, Mar- oh. Martin says that to me about everybody. <laughs> so I tried to get in his in his eye line as I'm walking down, but he doesn't. I'm about to stand up if you tilt. Well, I'll just to give you a warning. Oh, that was pretty good. Oh, nice. I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> oh, you cut to the wide. So, anyways, he, he's holding his water. Yeah, and he's just he's like this, and he's got that you know designer guy, the Australian, <laughs> Jonathan Ives. Yes, the good, yeah, good man. And he's like, uh, he's just he's just like this, sort of studying his water and listening to Jonathan Ives probably coming up with. The next, uh, that, that's a story. Was that, was that, <laughs> that, was, that was the whole story? <laughs> hey everyone, that is Jeff McPherson. He is Dr. Tiki himself. Jeff, you are an internet superstar. Thank Thanks you. so much for being on Thank the program. You. All right, let's nice. move from that's cocktails to wine. And uh, our next friend is the host of Wine Library <laughs> TV's The Fiery Gary Vaynerchuk. Let's take a look at a clip from Wine Library oh, TV. Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay. Nerd. 
Chuck. Well, so my uh, dad dragged me into the family business, which was a wine shop. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, at first I didn't like it so much, making ice eight hours a day. But eventually I started reading the magazines and I found that there was an interest and I got really into it about 17. But my parents were good parents and they didn't want me to drink. So I figured, well, I was reading all these flavors, so I kind of started going out there and trying those flavors. I figured by the time I turned 21, I would have an advantage, a leg up on everybody else. The first wine we have and, you know, is a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, yes. and the big characteristics are grass and grapefruit. You know, I've actually, that's true. You, they'll describe it, they'll say the taste is, it's like grass and grapefruit, and you'll think, who's ever, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> So you've set out to try and teach people what that means, to educate them. I've done it. You know, yeah. that's how I did it. I mean, what, you know, I ate cigars when I was little. This is how you build your palate. So, and people should be uh, free to, to try this at home, and, and, and you think this will really educate them. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. All right, here he is, everyone. The host of The Thunder Show, Gary Ooh. Vaynerchuk. Now, now, Gary. Gary. Yes, I'm trying to get cozy. Give me a second. Get cozy, please. Yeah. Why don't you have a sip of whatever? Why don't you give yeah. us a zero out of oh, yeah. 100 rating on that garbage what right there? We'll get right off the, right the, the bat here. What, what, what kind of a nose does that have? Like, how does that hit your palate? Open this for I can't even yes. open it, <laughs> it's let alone try it's it. It's kind of smacks of, like, filthy Mrs. Oh, yeah. Butterworth or something like that. <laughs> And it tastes like grass. Come on, please. swing that down. It's, it's, it's actually got a tremendous nose. You know, kind of makes me think a little bit of, like, a gingerbread man, a little bit of that, you know, it's got a little of that Ricola, ri you know that whole little thing, right? It's got a little bit of that going on. I'm starting to see gingerbread men after I drink that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you think? Zero out of 100, what do you, what's the rating? I think it's tremendous. Yeah. What, what's the mouthfeel on that? <laughs> Sticky. Right. <laughs> Sticky, but it's got tremendous flavor profile. And great length on the finish, you know, there's some complex complexity in the back end of the palate, and uh, I'm pretty impressed overall. Yeah, me too. It's kind of like when I used to do all that diamond tap as a high school yeah. student. <laughs> I want to buy like, a case of that now. After wow. It's good stuff. It. You, know, like, you know, it's a 90 <laughs> to 91 point homemade yeah, brew. Not bad at all. <laughs> now, Gary, you don't yeah. fit the stereotype of, of a wine expert. How'd you get you started in this racket? So this racket started, my, uh, my, my parents had a liquor store, and... Uh, Which mine did, God. Yeah, and so, <laughs> you know, I was much more into baseball cards. You know, I was pumped selling my $1,000 a weekend uh, baseball card business, which was phenomenal. You know, in eighth grade, if you're making $1,000 in cash a weekend, you're feeling really You were solid. not making $1,000 a weekend doing baseball cards. Sometimes two. And so it was really, really solid. And then I turned 15 and my parents wow. said, good news, you have to work at the liquor store. We're going to pay you two bucks an hour. I'd go to the store and I had to make ice for 10 hours a day. And I used to cry the entire 45 minute ride to work. Well, I got to go to the liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you make 20 bucks a day instead of giving up a G note, that hurts. So what I basically ended up happening was my routine became very basic at 16, 17, was come to the store, eat 45 Slim Jims, play scratch off tickets until I lost all my money, and then sit there and read the wine spectator. And slowly but surely I realized people collected wine. Um, that tied in the whole baseball card thing. Uh, basically in a five year span from 1998 to 2003, I blew up the family business to one of the largest independent wine retail stores wow. in the country. I launched winelibrary.com in 1997. And then on November 14, 2005, I turned 30, was driving from Manhattan to New Jersey and freaked out and decided I want to be a video blog superstar. Had you been drinking on that, for that drive? I, I had not been drinking. <laughs> and, uh, what you know, was that? And this was 2005, late oh, 05. Okay. And you know, listen, I had everything going for me, right? I, you know, I had a 40, 50 million dollar company. Uh, I had 100 employees. Life was awesome. The Jets just made the playoffs. Life was good. Trying to make me feel bad about my life. Yeah, I'm doing whatever I can. And so. Good job. And I also was seeing, you know, because we had four d web developers and we had a good web culture at the store because of the online business we were doing. And they were during lunchtime watching, you know, Rocket Boom and Zay Frank yeah. and Kay Rose over there with Dignation. And I was like, those infected guys. Infected. Yeah, Martin. infected with Martin Sargent. And so, and I, you know, I was taking a look at that and I was like, you know what? Those guys aren't that good. I can do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been talking about wow. all these years. Wow. How many, how many people are watching wa show? Uh, so we have, my show is daily. 
Um, so it's a five day a week show. We're in the 80,000 range That's per day. Tremendous. You know, it's solid. Um, but I, you know, for me, I come from that world. You know, I'm not, you know, like cool. I, I come from a business world. I, you know, you sound pretty cool, dude. Thanks, dude. Yeah. So wait, you you, the, you're making a thousand dollars when you're in junior hair. high. You like that, right? The chest hair. The chest hair is nice. You like that, right? Did you trim that down? <laughs> I do. I big. angle it before I come up here. Nice. Um, <laughs> you you should have clipped your mic right the, to the, the chest. The fact of the matter. <laughs> that would have been. The fact of the matter is, is that, you know, for this audience, you know, they're kind of watching this and it's cool and there's all these rad people and they're like what, trying to wrap their head around it. I think what's fundamentally interesting for me is that, you know, I'm a business first kind of guy. Luckily, you know, my parents gave me the genetics to be, you know, not only good at business and have the back end marketing and PR aspects, but I also have, you know, shockingly good looks and extremely solid in front of the camera. And so that's obviously very solid combination yeah. for victory, Martin. It's a triple threat. Right it's a triple there. threat. <laughs> uh, but I look at things business wise and I know what's going on. And so when my book is in the top 40 in Amazon today, right? By the way, that hasn't come out yet, right? Can I, can I say that? Let me just read that. My book is in the top 40 on Amazon today. I think it, you have to start understanding what's happening to the business world. Th what was NBC once Seinfeld and Friends left, right? Content is king. Now, marketing is the queen, and I'm all about the marketing and the PR. But what you have to understand is the eyeballs of America are now in different places. They're shifting. And they're going to different places. And for you, that's huge opportunity if you take the time to realize it. And, so, do, and do, Martin, wait. And, <laughs> and Gator, I know you're captivated because you haven't said a damn word yet. And, I got, I got some questions. It's and, impossible. You can really get quality value if you niche it out. Understand this. Don't spend money on our shows. We're too big. Wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> hey. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, it's, uh... You would be stunned if you did a little homework and open your mind just a hair how many niche opportunities for your brands or your clients there are to make massive impact on your ROI. In the wine industry, I yell at people You're for talking, buying- You sound like Susie Orman. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a 1 800 number on the screen right now? Here, man? If you call now. And so, Get wait a minute. This is One last point, dudes. Oh, yeah. I got a question Jesus. for you. All right. But here's, here's the key. Here's the key. I'm going to check my email. Go ahead. <laughs> well, this is why you have 17 viewers. So, oh. Oh. love. Love. Yeah. Love. yeah to You're an internet superstar. Okay. <laughs> So, so why don't you why don't you come up with your own label of wine? Like a two buck Vayner Chuck or something. Yeah, I got my <laughs> I like that. I got my own label. I make I make it myself in my toilet. You, you, <laughs> you can do a lot of nice varietals Just with some raisin toast and ketchup. Let's, let's let him make his last point. All right, make your point. The point is this. Fundamentally, there's a lot of traditional ways to spend twenty, forty thousand dollars on an ad here or there. I just don't think people realize. You hear the sex appeal of the internet. If you do the homework to understand that it's the brands within the internet that you need to monetize against, you will have victory. You will get a raise. You'll make money. You'll be happy. Go to Hawaii. Love life. Thank yeah. you. And I have also heard you say that you, you don't want to be a one-trick pony. You've said this on your site, Gary oh. Vaynerchuk. I, I did my research. Oh. I did my research. Where are you? You're a Jets fan too. Let's, I mean, right. let's just hold hands nice throughout the whole thing. Grip. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> where do you want? Where are you going to broaden out besides the, the wine thing? Well, you know, the whole Oprah thing is fascinating. Yeah, you know, she's got a good business model. I kind of think it's solid. Honestly, have you been on you know, Oprah? I no, kinda, I have not. I have twice. I kind of want uh, you just to <laughs> come lay your hands on me or something. You want to touch? I want you just to touch my. I want some of that energy. You want I don't, water, right? If I get like that kind of. I put, I put it back here. You, you feel that, right? Every time I get that it's crazy good. energy, I Gary end up is pool faith or healing the internet right now. <laughs> The, the, the fact of the matter is, is that we are, and you're going to want to write this down, we are in the <laughs> fundamental era, uh, the gold rush of personal branding. The cost of entry to build personal brand or brand itself, whatever the product is, is zero. It's time smarts. Understand that. It's huge. And I've decided I'm going to kill it. And you are. And so. you are. And with that, I just got to tell you that Gary Vaynerchuk, <laughs> you are an internet <laughs> superstar. Like yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>
Kevin Agriff, Gary Vaynerchuk, Wine Library I'll TV, everyone. Wine Library, Wine Library TV. Well, I guess that is all the time we have for this special edition of Internet Superstar. I want to thank our friends Jim Lauderback, Kevin Rose, Kent Nichols, Jeff McPherson, and Gary Vaynerchuk. My yeah. name is Martin Sargent. This is The Gator. We'll be up here if you guys want to ask us any questions. And then after this, we're going to head over to that Jillian's place and have some cocktails. So we hope that you can all come by there and we'll continue the conversation over there. Don't forget to check out our show. This will be up, I believe, next Wednesday. Revision3.com slash Internet Superstar. Thank you guys so much for being here. And we'll see you at the bar, everyone. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. 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 Yeah.